You know guys, I really love myself an underdog story. My Hero Academia, Black Clover and One Piece all rate among my favorite shows because of that simple concept. You take somebody who has inherently no chance to succeed and by the power of anime, give him a shot in the ring. And being a failure at life as well, I reckon projecting myself into these fictional worlds has been all but natural. While I'm still waiting for my own grimoire, quirk or devil's fruit to arrive at my doorstep, every so often I am granted a small microcosm of that idea. Like for example, back filling into a losing match in Overwatch to be given the chance to turn a sinking ship around. But let's take this one step at a time. On our last episode, we have faced off against the greatest Reinhardt player of all time in an attempt of breaking their spirit by playing me. No, wait, Jeff deleted that replay. Oh, right. On our last episode, we decide to shake the rust off our old boats and get back into the saddle of my personal main hero. While our performance has inspired even the enemy team to compliment me on my gameplay, considering that this is the age of DLC characters, I doubt that we're going to see that happen again anytime soon. But that doesn't mean that I don't still enjoy playing support. I mean, what's more satisfying than sleep darting smug looking Genji players? Back into the off meta bin, where you belong. Though I have to say that I was caught by surprise when the game offered me a loot box while playing DPS. Not only that, but support also had the longest queue of them all. With that said, there's definitely something very satisfying about having somebody's life in your hands. In a video game sense, anyway. I mean, take this lonely Zenyatta player for example. As a Zenyatta main myself, you can be certain that I put in the effort to make sure they don't have to suffer in the same way that I usually do. Every healing dart is being shot with conviction, keeping them alive in the moment but uncertain if their next breath is going to be their last. 5 IQ DPS players may claim that supports don't have a lot of impact on the outcome of the match, but if that is the case then how come that my performance alone is keeping us in the game in this very moment? Checkmate atheists. Surely support players are the unsung heroes of Overwatch, and to a certain extent that is exactly what today's story is about. But here's a little bit of extra info for you. Did you know that if you backfill in a match, you are still granted the replay of that entire game? That means that we have a very unique opportunity to find out how and why my team has been struggling before the alpha chat support player arrived to turn the ship around. You know what that means my friends, our story today takes place on Hollywood. And let me tell you, I couldn't be happier about finally getting to tell a story on a map that isn't freaking 2cp. That's to say that my map RNG has been really really bad in the last month and change. Anyway, let's take a look at what my team has been struggling with before I arrive. Taking a peek into their spawn, it seems like they're being fairly lively for the most part, though one thing sticks out to me as an omen for things to come. It wouldn't be until 3 seconds after the round started that Freytex finally chose a character to join the rest of his team. While that isn't a big problem, especially when playing a fast character such as Lucio, remember this detail, it will become relevant later on. The first team fight of the game began with our resident main tank deciding that he had to be the DPS that takes up Baptiste's immortality field, completely neglecting his shield ability and thusly feeding himself into the grinder. While that warranted an immediate retreat sites of my team, questionable tank decisions were not unique to our Reinhardt player as the enemy hamster decided to feed in solidarity, equalizing the engagement. A bit of an odd match for sure, and the second fight that was then taken to the objective would only strengthen that impression. Eliminations have been traded back and forth, but eventually the defenders would come out ahead. While our DPS players have made poking attempts in the choke, Freytex on Lucia was being a good taxi and escorted his tanks back to the front line. But the keen-eyed among you will notice a glaring difference between these two teams. One side has ultimates, whilst the other doesn't. That means that a simple shadow deadeye combo would defuse the attack as quickly as it formed. And this is where the prophecy finally becomes reality. Freytax has not joined the rest of his team for another attempt and instead remained in the spawn room, standing completely still lifeless, like a puppet. The others don't seem to have noticed that their one player short because they confidently solo graphed the opposing Reinhardt to then proceed to get no eliminations. While Freytex has been getting yelled at by his mom because he was playing Overwatch at 11pm on a weekday and that without him having done his homework, the rest of his team proceeded to eat shit because of course they did. Finally, the second support slot would be freed up and the hero of Tamriel finally arrived to bolster the troops. I was pulled out of my custom match with the explicit purpose of leading this team of failures to victory. And considering how talented I am, it didn't even matter which character I would play, so I simply picked the one that the game suggested. Little did I know that that my predecessor had chosen the exact same one.
Games like these are always tough because you can't rely on your game sense to figure out where the match is currently headed. You have no idea how much your team has been feeding the enemy's ultimates or how likely they're going to be going for flanking strats. It became apparent to me that my team had adopted a bit of a timid playstyle, not fully making use of my speed boost. Involuntarily turning into a ground Lucio caused me to get shattered and then become a smear on the wall thanks to a Reinhardt charge. Well, that was one ultimate down I guess, and while we have been on the respawn train, our Roadhog, who somehow survived, menacingly walked towards the enemy Reinhardt to avenge his fallen comrades. I joined him in the nick of time for an escort and we were ready to give this another shot. 60 seconds left on the clock meant that big plays had to happen and our Roadhog opened up strong with a pick on the frontlining Symmetra. The enemy hammer dropped in and used his ultimate cutting us off from our Reinhardt who was currently delivering a beatdown on the objective. I tried to swiftly dispose of the mines to help my Reinhardt before- oh. Oh no, the footage is corrupted. Just suddenly turned into a black screen. Man, guests will never know what happened there. Returning to the fight after having been eliminated due to unknown circumstances, we found ourselves finally having a real shot at capping the card. Two very distinct frontlines have formed in the heat of battle, but thankfully we had a backline assassin. Since I was inexplicably pretty pissed at the enemy Hammond for no reason whatsoever, I decided to chase the dumb hamster down and serve the kill to my flanking Farah. The objective was ours and the real game could finally begin. That wombo combo between Farah and I on the opposing Hammond was only a taste for things to come. With a beat drop in my pocket and a fat pig by my side, we speed boosted towards the enemies who tried to escape and regroup. But little did they know that this was a pincer attack. So while they tried to fend the two of us off, Alfara came in from behind with a massive barrage to do devastating damage to the enemy team's morale. The fact that they couldn't punish her for that ultimate spoke volumes for the discord that was currently taking place. The enemy Reinhardt tried to run but was chased down and executed before the last survivor got wombo combo between Roadhog, Farah, and I. Witnessing the slaughter of your team is never good for your morale so I can't blame their Sombra. Wait, when the heck did they switch? Sombra. We're trying to make it out alive. Unfortunately for her, we have been in Bloodhound mode, so at the end, all of that effort was in vain. The cart made free progress from here on out, and anyone foolish enough to challenge the ganking squad would be met with a swift yet painful end to their existence. And no, my friends, you are not dreaming. Alfred is currently shafting the enemy team on what is arguably one of the worst DPS characters in Overwatch. I mean, seriously, if you are even remotely competent, and I'm talking bare minimum capability of aiming, then taking out Farah with all these hit scan options in the game is really easy. Frankly speaking, Farah is kinda like Zenyatta. There's no reason for either of these characters to be effective other than through your enemy's mistakes. Or I guess when your team is just outclassing the enemy team by a huge margin, at which point it doesn't matter what you play anyway. So it's time to find out if Alfred can keep the streak up and continue dominating on this off meta garbage can of a hero or if the enemy DPS finally wake up. Cliff, hitting Farah is actually really difficult and I'm so tired of every Everyone yelling at us DPS players to counter her when clearly they don't understand how hard it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're not fooling anyone here, buddy. While I am putting a lot of responsibility on hitscan characters to be dealing with the Flying Menace, D.Va is actually also a very strong counter to Farah, which means that my job is keeping her away from my DPS. My Rotok agreed and in an attempt of keeping our DPS players safe, we decided to full send it towards the enemy D.Va, granting our Farah all the space they needed to rain down hell from above. We made short work of the remaining enemy players trying to desperately stall the cup before we secured the cap and decided to try and chase down the survivors. Granted, that chase climax in me getting solo shattered by a nano boost at Reinhardt, but thankfully, my Roadhog was there to make sure they couldn't follow it up with an elimination. Alfred dive bombed the squishies in the back line and secured a kill on the low mobility support before being taken out, while I made sure that my savior did not end up eliminated as well by speed boosting him to safety. Our team, as well as theirs, took advantage of the stalemate to take a breather, regroup, and consider their next play. But when I spotted a lonely Sombra out there in the back line, naturally, I decided to attack her. The fact that she didn't translocate even after dropping pretty low could only mean that she was trying to go for the mega health pack, giving me an easy read and an even easier elimination. That kill meant go time for both of the teams to break the intermission and go at it once again. The enemy McCree got booped into our back line and rather than trying to back out, doubled down on the flank just to be eliminated. With no DPS to pressure our Roadhog, he decided to go in and secure another kill, this time on Baptiste, meaning that the defender's chance of success have gotten slimmer and slimmer. While the spawn advantage may allow for a comeback, Alfred decided to really drive his payload home by nuking half of the enemy 
enemy team with a barrage. McCree returned just to get solo shattered and by the time their diva got her mech back it was already far too late. What are you gonna do? Touch the objective? A team destined to lose with no hope to succeed coming together on a bunch of off-meta garbage heroes not only to turn the game around but to deliver an absolute beatdown. Let this be a lesson young ones, every game of Overwatch no matter how dire is always winnable at every point in time, always. The end. Hey, thanks for watching this stories episode. Thank god I could finally win a game in one of these, and that with a comeback no less. If you enjoyed watching it, consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell to not miss out on the next one. And if you really enjoyed it, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out or maybe sharing it with a friend. Thank you once again, have a fantastic day, and until next time, peace.